Let's spin together Revit tip number two, multi-address project, the simple version. Okay, so Revit by itself natively lets you only have one project address for the Revit files, and a lot of times you have a building that's the same building, it's blocked from three different site locations, let's say, right? Uh, typically, the way somebody would do that is you would model uh, the building in one Revit file, and then you have let's say three other Revit files that have the site information and the project addresses and you link that Revit file to them. I had a very simple building and this building was just a storage unit from three different locations. There's not a lot of construction administration on it. Um, so I basically got a little workaround using Dynamo to be able to have three different project addresses and three different lots and blocks. Now the project address is a default Revit parameter uh, my template also has an additional parameter lot and block in it, okay? Um, so I'll show you how I set it up later in the video. I'll just quickly demonst demonstrate to you what I'm talking about. So let's go to our Manage tab, uh, Project Information. And if you go down here, uh, you see the default project address parameter. Now, all of these MS prefix parameters, these are the custom parameters for this Dynamo script that I set up. And it's a very simple script. Um, basically, you have your project address one, two, and three, and lots and blocks one, two, and three. All that information is stored here. And then I have the multi-site address toggle. That just lets the Dynamo script know, hey, is this a multi-site project? So you gotta check this box. And this is where the Dynamo script right here, the multi-site site ID parameter, you could set it to one, two, or three. And the Dynamo script just takes this number, if it's number two, it'll take the second address, plop it in here. If you set this to three, it'll do that, plop it here, and same thing for the lots and blocks. So that's it, let's demonstrate. So let's change this to a two. Now the project address is 147 Compass Avenue, lot one, block two. Uh, this, by the way, it's a real address, but it's not the actual project address, uh, just random addresses, I think. So let's do that, change this to a two, press OK. Let's fire up the Dynamo player, which is right here. And here's my Dynamo script. So all we have to do is just press the display button for the script to activate. So the idea is you model one building, um, you plop the addresses in, and right before you need to print the set for, let's say, permits, you would just go through the different addresses and print them out separately. So let's hit run and let's watch this address change. As you see, now the address is 300 Ocean Avenue and lot three, lot four. Now, let's just, for funsies, let's do number three. Now, it's 3500 Boardwalk and lot five, lot six. So, I'll show you how I set up the parameters. Uh, in the YouTube description, you can find the link to the download, uh, the download package for this. It's going to have the Dynamo file. I also have the image of the Dynamo draft. And I have a readme that gives you the instructions and the parameter setup. So I actually even wrote all the parameters so you could just copy and paste them here into Revit and set it up pretty quick, okay? Uh, the only thing I would watch out for, I don't know if it's gonna happen to you, for some reason, whenever I jump between machines, um, on this Dynamo script, you see this MEP fabrication containment? Um, you just have to click this and change this to project information category. Now, I always change it, and every time I copy and paste the file, for some reason, it likes to be MEP fabrication. I don't know if it's corrupt, but it's a very quick change. So just go through the Dynamo file, swap out all these guys, uh, do the same thing for this one here, and this guy here. Now the image that's going to be in the YouTube description, in the download link, is going to have all the right categories, so you can just follow that if you forget. That said, let's go ahead and let's set this up. So I'm going to close this one out. And let me just show you. So this is a clean template. I have my default Revit project address. Oops, just go into the family. As you see here, that's the default Revit project address and lot block. That's the 
parameter set up in my template. So let me go here, manage, project information. So we just got to set up all those parameters. So I'll just guide you through it real quick. We're going to pull this over to the side. We're going to get this guy out here, parameter setup. So it's just going to be a quick copy and paste job. So let's go ahead, maximize this a little bit. I just want to see project information pop up. There you go. And let's do this. Okay. That's it, let's get to it. And here we are. So what we want to do is click this little icon here. That's the project parameters. It's to set up parameters for our project, uh, Revit project. To create a new parameter, we're going to click this button right here. It says new parameter. And right here, you're going to see these are the text parameters I set up. This is the one yes and no parameter I set up. One integer parameter I set up. And these parameters are for the complex version. Uh, in the next YouTube video, I actually have a Dynamo script that takes this a step further. And let's say you have three separate, the topography changes for the buildings. Let's say one building has a different roof, an extra chimney. So the Dynamo script actually will apply those changes to it as well. Now in this video, this is just a simple version. We're just gonna focus on a different project address and a lot in block. In the next video, I'll show you how to make changes to the building also. Okay, so let's start out with our text parameters. With this guy, text, let's copy our text parameter. Now this is gonna be instance. We're gonna go here, we're gonna find project information. So project information, text, common. Um, we can group this, I like to do other. So that way they all stay together. Common, looks about right. Always double check this, usually I make a mistake here. So here's one, let's do it again. Second address, it's gonna be text. So this is gonna be other. And this is gonna be project information. You can also t use your keyboard to quickly navigate to these uh, parts. And the third one. project information here we go now let's do the lots and blocks these are also our text parameters again grouped under other project information everything looks good so it's a little bit of a setup at first but well, once you set this up, you will have this, and I, I actually have it in my template because this happens quite often, so it doesn't hurt. And multi-site toggle, you just basically won't use that information anyway if you do not um, check that box or run the script. So everything looks good here. Get the last lot and block. Other and project information. Now for this guy, we need a yes and no parameter. That's to let us know that that's a multi-site address or else the Dynamo script will ignore that. So now this one, let's click yes and no, also under other, but everything we're doing is in project information because that's where it's located, looking good. This parameter is gonna be the site ID. So for the site ID, click again, this is going to be integer, so you're going to click here, integer, and project information. And looking good. So that's it for the setup. Now because I started with a blank file, I do have to uh, put some addresses in. As you see, these are all blank, so let's check this box over here. For site ID, we'll start with number 2 because this is, would be our number one. And since we already have this, I'm not gonna bother with setting up this guy or this one. We're just gonna go to two. So this is gonna be Blue Spruce Avenue. Uh, Pine Street, let's say. 
block 5,000, block 1, block 12, block 7,000. Now these are very silly numbers obviously because it's all just a presentation. So it looks like it's all set up. We have this guy checked. Now let's jump back to our dynamo player. Now the first time you do this, you're not going to have the dynamo player set up right here. So to add the script to it, again, you're just going to go to the download package that you find in the YouTube description. You can click this icon here, open in Explorer. That brings you to the place where dynamo player looks for all the files. And all you do is you just take this dynamo file and you drag it into here. Now I already have it, so I don't have to do that. So let's go see this in action. Bring back Revit. Let's run the script. As we see here, uh, it says Blue Spruce Avenue, lot 5000, block 1. And let's go ahead and do the third one. So number 3. Run our script again. Now it's Pine Street, lot 12, block 7000. And there you guys have it. Uh, it's the, my workaround using Dynamo to have uh, multiple addresses and lots of blocks uh, for your Revit project. Now this is up to three. Uh, if you want, you can obviously just follow the method. You look in the Dynamo, uh, let me pull it up right here. Uh, all you would do is literally just, if you have more parameters, you just have to copy this and add, as you see here, uh, this would show you the lot number lot number and block three, you just add to the four. So you basically just follow the format, it's one, two, three. Again here, it's one, two, three. Uh, and then you would have your Python script, and that's what basically sorts it out. So I'll have a video later that explains it more. And in the next Revit tip, I'll also show you how to make small changes to it. Because obviously, if it's a different site location, you are going to have different topography there. And let's say there's a, just a slight variation of building, different roof, um, maybe an extra wall or two, you know what I mean? But for this tutorial, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next Revit tip.